Composing Gloves here. Today we're going to be talking about the nature of melody. I know it sounds really deep. It's not that complicated. It's sort of a spinoff on the idea of uh, structure and form. We're not going to be looking at making melodies. Again, we're going to get a lot more in the production and the stuff and the and the making little examples of the genres type deal or maybe entire tracks. And what I want to focus on is how melodies are used. So here I've got a little example on a track I recently did and it's sort of crazy. I want you to pay attention to how the melody takes on qualities. In this case, it's sort of a an idea, a motif, how that idea, motif, melody takes on qualities and it gets transitioned and passed off. This is the nature of sort of how melody moves around. It's con it's consistent in all genres, but in drum and bass, it's uh they're a little more obvious, but that's also one of the main elements of drum and bass is these passing offs or staying the same. So any electronic music generally houses this idea. So here I'll play it for you real quick. I'm gonna just play up that from there up to like somewhere in here. So three, two, one. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is like, I, I love this stuff. Like, oh my gosh. I like this stuff so much. Oh, there's a cool element. I got to show you this cool element right here. It's right there. So the back to our question, <laughs> move your body. That's from a friend from another track. And it actually, when I imported it, I, I save everything with, sam with slices. So... So it like chopped itself to conform to the tempo and it became a really interesting thing. So I, I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. And his voice just sounds pretty darn dope when you pitch it down. We processed it a little bit and stuff like that. But you can hear how the melody shifts. It gets passed off from thing to thing. That is the nature of melody. That's what we need to talk about. So it's they're pretty easy concepts to identify. You just need, you probably just haven't put words or a very large amount of consciousness to it. You probably refer to it as style or, you know, that feeling that happens like, Let's uh, let's start getting a little more particular about things. So here, there are a couple different ways melodies can occur. One, melodies can be tonal, like notes. Notes. T melodies can be timbral, meaning textures, like the air rushing, the atmosphere, that kind of a thing. Melodies can have principal textural qualities instead, instead of focusing on the tonal. So that's another one. And then the third one is uh, there. There may be more. I'm just I'm just naming off what comes to my head right now. Uh, the third one is they could be rhythmical. So that's another thing. Drum and bass, you'll notice, has all three of these because it's very experimental. So I hear I happen to have a plethora of these ideas sort of happening all at the same time. I don't really have a great melody example except for over here. But this composition largely, this isn't, I wouldn't even consider this a melody example, but I have this thing. But see, even there, and I said melody example, I meant textural or melodic example. You know what I mean? They like the tones, like you're singing a melody, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like that would be considered a melody. Um, that's the other kind. Here, I have this composition has, like that's still pretty much a textural idea with the two chord theme, the going down and coming up. So you'll notice that that's a thing that I have sort of going on here. So let's talk, let's break this down. So. Right now, big big picture idea, we have this stuff called melody and there are these sort of general aspects and how do you know if it's the melody? Now we're gonna be talking about it from the perspective of a drum and bass producer. If you talk to tonal people about theory, and music theory and stuff, they're gonna they're gonna give you way, uh, sort of different definitions because it's all about notes and counterpoint and composition, and they have things called colors and textures and stuff. But melody is not that does not come to mind really fast. And EDM and electronic music, where sound design is a principal concern, it's a lot more. It's a lot. It's way different. Like you can have melodies in a different sense. D musical ideas can be considered a little more particularly because we're giving so much attention to each thing. So here, and uh, now. Okay, a couple more things about that because I can't just move on without saying some of this stuff. These 
you will hear transitions of principal qualities of a melody shifting to another principal quality. Sometimes they'll disappear too to create a moment of either tension or release or atmosphere, whatever they're going for. In that case, the melody would still shift. It would just be weaker. It would be substantially weak in all the categories. So you use this when you listen to drum and bass. This is, this is everywhere. This is everywhere in um, most music, period. It is the idea that when you go from one melodic quality to another melodic quality, you have interest. So here I go from drums and and really rhythmical bass. And here you'll see again, I, this two chord idea stays in the track most of the time to a sort of a rhythmical bass, but it's got a lot more textural and melodic content to it. It's like da na 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 da na 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 like that thing. Like if I come over here, play down here, it's very obvious. Now that might sound wrong, but in context, it's got, there's more going on. So as you see, it makes more sense there. But you can see this this becomes our feature, our focal point. And the melody shifted from this sort of craziness to uh, that that over there. And it's still pretty crazy. They still got the drums and all the stuff. And there I, I start throwing in a little some more advanced concepts about call and response and using my drums to be an element rather than just sort of a backing track and it's just a number of things. And there's also other things that are going on too. Like up here, this bass is the main bass in the first drop. So it's sort of a, a recap, like, oh, you remember that thing over here? Here it is again, but in a new way. And then the intro is also being reused over here. So this could be considered a type of recapulation, sort of. And it, then you get, I go out to another sort of unusual drop thing and then I end it. But you get the idea. So when these transitions happen, when we go from maybe a more textural quality or a more rhythmical quality to a textural quality, or maybe we just have a shift in the same quality, like here, I think it's pretty fair to say that we went from this crazy vocal pad, atmosphere, texture, to a new kind of texture. Because when this comes in, um, a new pad comes in. It's the one labeled, um, whoops, mood. <laughs> So it's still there, it just changes quality. Now that's actually the fruity delay in case you're wondering about how that happens because there's actually multiple little um, things happening there from the delay plugin. What is that called? Is it just called fruity delay? Whatever, go look up FL12 effects series, delay bank, that's what it is. Delay bank is like outrageous as a delay plugin. Okay, and I don't use it that much. So I was like, I gotta use this plugin. I gotta like put it to work. I like, never put it to work really. So these, these qualities now, these, these happen generally at points in the song that are structurally sound. There are points where it's okay. There's like a doorway. And there are also points that usually call for this. So like at eight bars, there's a call for this. Now I have everything shifted over a beat and things don't line up on the grid the way you would sort of expect them to because I have a bar of silence at the beginning so that the click disappears because I'm using um, all sorts of weird distortion things that give me issues. And there's also breaks occasionally. So these breaks also cause problems with how it looks on the grid. But it's structurally, it's eight bar, four bar. It's, it's, it's a pretty sound thing. Um, okay, so they happen at these doorways though, where, where you're ready to go into a new room. The room has been prepared. And when I was in, a, I was taking a master class of performance for clarinet. And some of the stuff that we learned was like, you know, like each the, each part of your piece of music is sort of like a new room, and you got to take the people, the, your listeners, into their into that new room. You need to show them the room. You need to show them around. Show them like, hey, here's my couch. Here's my like dog. Don't he bites. Don't touch him. Here's um my APC forty Akai pad. You can't see it, but it's over here. I just got it. Super stoked about it. It's like you know, you show them all your stuff, and, you, and if you're excited about what you have, and you have some neat stuff to show, then they're going to be excited about it too. It's like a, it's like the melodies is sort of your conversation, and then you have a little a bunch of little elements that are your conversation starters. And but if you need to have smooth transitions. If you go from like talking about your like children and how successful they are to talking about like the nuclear crisis somewhere in the world to talking about like how you think aliens well this has sort of has a theme it's conspiracy then you go over to like the recent soccer game like you're gonna have some serious issues with people following what you're trying to say getting main points down and sometimes and that's sort of like 
if they like breakcore, then they're totally cool with that kind of a thing. But even breakcore stays crazy, so people can stay in one type of mood. When you switch, I like to switch moods like crazy. It's one of the things I'm working on a track called Hearing Test. I just love the idea of going from one mood where people really jive and then taking them completely out of that mood and putting them somewhere else. I don't think there's enough tracks that do that. They're just, they're, they're out there. There are definitely tracks out there. Like there's so much music is ridiculous, but I'm just saying. So when we have these transitional moments, they're good opportunities to introduce new elements of music. You may, you do this intuitively when you write music. When you listen to music, you experience it and expect it intuitively, but you've never probably really, well, you, you might have, I don't know, maybe you're the one, but you've never really put the idea of melody happening like this, maybe into conscious thought, maybe giving it words. So now you're aware. And so when you get to a doorway in your track, um, that's usually where people hit creative block is finding that new element. And so we're going to be dealing with sort of stuff like that later. Now, uh, let's break down sort of what's happening here a little more in detail, and then I think we'll call it good. Let's go over here to this. Well, let's break down this one that we heard uh, just now. So first, you'll notice that I have sort of a little riser. I have a little riser right here, and it does not rise in the sense that, you know, like the na 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 or speeding up. Instead, what I try to do is I try to subdue you and create a break, a moment of space as opposed to a moment of attention. So here I go, crazy, 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 jiving, 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 silence, and then I have this uh, riser thing, and I've got this ah sound, and with that combined with the new elements I have here, it's like, it's like perfect. Like I, I like it. Like it's literally what I want. So, you know, sometimes when you get something like that, you just don't, don't touch it anymore. Like don't mess with it. It's the way you want it. And okay. So we start out over here though, before we even get to that, this now is we're starting in the middle of a track. So it's kind of hard because you haven't experienced all the ideas, but we have this rhythmic idea of the drum. Now I actually, I think I use sampled breaks and I mess with those a lot, but I wanted to have my own break in here that like I, I made just because I wanted the individual ability to make samples that I could mix individually. That way it would create a new sort of vibe for this moment in my track. It wasn't that I was like tired of using samples and that I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to have a little, a little more fun doing something, you know, I try to have fun. So whoops. And here we go. So that's the thing, and there's uh, there's actually a part two to this thing. So that's the second one. And if you ever have problems with writing a break, people probably look at this and go, dang, this thing's crazy. Just just bang out a break in your head. Like everyone, I'm pretty sure can do this. Like I go around school and like, like, you know, you're just going crazy. Just like do a little bit of beatboxing. You'll come up with something cool. That, or you could just listen to some sampled breaks and go through several of them and then try and recreate something similar. If you're like really having a hard time. Now, if your ability to trans Transcribe rhythm over sucks, then you may consider opening up a break that is in tempo and analyzing where things lie and then trying to write out the exact same break and then work your way to writing out things that you hear instead. There's definitely a sort of a line that you have to cross of being able to do that. But anyways, the, the nature of this melody is we start out with this rhythmical idea. The bass uh, contributes to it. They are in the same style of melody, emphasis on rhythm. And, and the, the chord change here does not serve as a sort of a melodic content. Like you might be prone to think because you're like, oh, it's an instrument. But look, it, it's very rhythmic. It's... Uh, <laughs> It's the idea is moving chord one, chord two, chord one. That's the idea. It's not like that's if you you've been like sort of duped by my trickery if you think that because that's not the goal. The goal is chord one and two chords going up and down emotion because it's not a melody in that sense with a very rhythmical content. So together they sort of enforce each other and create this really strong idea. Now this crazy vocal pad thing. If you're curious, it is heaviosity. Um, it's called vocalize. It's a multi they have. And I think I turned everything on. So it sounds like crazy. And I messed with a little bit of it, I think. I don't think I really did, actually. I think I just made it all on the first MIDI channel so that this note... Yeah, it triggers everything. And it sounds crazy. So 
this i'm sorry about the consistent clicking again that's just distortion and i don't i'd have to track down where that is and i've tried once you get sort of farther into a track finding that kind of stuff gets really difficult i have suspicions but all my suspicions have been wrong so far i've even silenced everything i don't even know what the issue is anymore i know it's related to either the compressor or distortion though so we've got uh, this vocal pad. This is just creating texture. This is a back element. This is not like a focal point. Texture, though, has been introduced, and I'm maintaining it as a concept. It's just taking the back seat. Here, we switch more to a textural content when I introduce the main melody. Uh, or in this case, this is actually a brand new uh, thing in the song. But I, I ease in the transition with this little sort of intro of, hey, here's a new sound, a new idea. It's going to be a main idea. Get ready to hear it. And then I let it drop with it. And so it really fits in with older ideas. So it gains acceptance to the listener a lot faster. But now I don't think all of this, like you might be thinking, holy crap, this guy's insane. He's thinking about all this stuff. I don't think all of this stuff while I'm making it, sometimes it's just fiddling around and then I'll come across ideas and I'll make, I'll make a significant portion of connections while I'm doing stuff, but I'm sort of explaining my final ideas in detail. But anyways, I introduced this new idea and we go from that doo -doo 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 to a rhythmical quality. We shift the rhythm. We shift. I said shift. We shift the rhythm. I said shift again uh, from the... Do, 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 do. when we take it and we put it in this more tonal context. So we've now given emphasis to tonal in um, notes a lot more than the original rhythmic balance. And we still keep the rhythm in there, but now we have changed the emphasis of melody. The nature of melody has changed. And it's something now, when you, I challenge you to go listen to your tracks and listen for this. Listen to your favorite dub, drum and bass. I was about to say dub and bass. That should be a thing. I don't know why that's not a thing. It's kind of already a thing, I guess if you want to call it reggae bass. But I'm thinking like dubstep, drum and bass, but it's sort of like funk, liquid funk. And ah, oh, there's there's genres for that. Okay, whatever. Anyways, uh, you can hear that. So I challenge you to go listen and then determine like did it did the did it change or did they instead layer in and add new elements and simply change the arrangement? Like think about how things are moving, the context they're going in. Very important sort of idea. So we get there, and I introduce this new idea, and you, the shift happens, and then the shift happens again, only I start throwing in all sorts of advanced concepts once we get to the break. Because I have this melody, but I, I using the drums as a... Um, I start using the drums as a focal point, like an actual thing that speaks. For example, when it drops, listen. The first thing you will hear is the mood come in, a sub, um, with an interesting stereo shape going on for the the bass up here. Uh, this is all related to this top bass. I just don't, I have a random automation occasionally that means like nothing. Like this is doing nothing. But I leave it there because I'm like paranoid or something. I don't know. Anyways, I know it looks sort of messy, but this is like once you've sort of got your project the way it is, you don't really want to move things because you might accidentally change something. So I just have a tendency to, if it doesn't matter that it's there anymore, I just leave it there. You guys may disagree. Sometimes I move stuff around and be clean, but I find more often than not I accidentally move something I didn't mean to move. So, but the drums respond. The drums are the first thing that says. So I get into this call and response type thing, which is an idea of melody. So I have like something happened, do 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 do, and then a response. It's like a telephone conversation. That's the best way to sort of picture a call and response. So I call you. I'm like, hey, bro, dude. I saw a penguin on your front lawn the other day, and he had an orange machine gun and was wearing a toupee, like. Get back to me as soon as you can, man. This seems pretty sketch. And then you're like, oh, no, man, bro. That's just my, like, mascot for my underground drum and bass business. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You have animatronic robot machine gun firing penguins. Totally normal. So, uh, so anyways, as you can see, you expect a call. Now, rewind. I purposely sort of said crazy stuff, besides the point of being a little entertaining, is you expect a call and you expect a response but you do not know what to expect in what I'm going to say. You don't know what I'm going to say yet. And so it's good to have a structure. So you're giving call response, but then you get to say a bunch of stuff and you may have a conversation with more than one person. And here I've got drums, I've got timbral qualities, but in this case, it's mostly, uh, it's not so much as timbre as it is notes. Uh, I mean, rhythmic qualities. So the rhythm, I've got the texture in the background. It takes a back seat during this conversation. It's just listening. And I've got a variety of things going on mixing-wise too, which also contribute to that texture quality. 
But then, the, of course, you will hear um, the the da na 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 da na 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 na. You will hear that talk to the drums and to additional other melodic pieces that also contain. It's mostly. It's a rhythmical nature, but it's also got a lot of tone and texture to it. So I maintain the shift into the drop, but I bring the I bring the drums up in importance just a touch. And so you'll hear it. You'll listen for this. Like you once you break it down like that, it's sort of easier to hear all the stuff that's going on in the drop. So here it is. So as you can see, there there are elements of this call and response and all these things going on. And together they form a big picture, a conversation that's interesting and dynamic and stays on some sort of a topic. It doesn't shift around to like all those crazy topics. So that's that. That's sort of that broken down quite, I think, I mean, like we, we broke it down pretty far. I mean, we could even go farther and talk about how maybe ideas and sound design influence the way that certain conversations and timbres were picked. But a lot of that's just intuition and doing things until you feel like they're right. Not everything is going to be like some crazy academic process, but you can make it, you could, you, like, you could, if you wanted to. Okay. So over here, I wanted to show you just another quick example. So I have a, I have a similar drop. You will hear a new thing come in. Maybe it's like your conversation liner to get out of the conversation or whatever. And you, you'll hear that come in, in this piece of melody, which was largely rhythmic, um, rhythmic in nature, but it had tonal textures, but the, the rips were very much like drums, only like you could tell that they were rips. So they're just an interesting thing. Um, if you're really curious about the rip sound, like that blah, blah, blah sound in the track, I have it in my sound design with FM8. I believe it's the rip video. And then it transitions over to a very tonal, very textural quality. It's got rhythmic elements still, but it stays very much based on the, uh, the, it stays very much based on timbre, not necessarily notes, not necessarily, it's meant to create a quality. A chord comes out, but it's a two note chord. It's a two chord theme, not a two note chord, two chords, you know, da, chord one, chord two, chord one, chord two. It still maintains that idea. And as the uh, things come in, you'll see it shift more and more and more to a rhythmical aspect till eventually we reach what was over there. And then, you know, it just keeps going. So you also see that there's a very clear doorway, usually pretty present, like here, all this stuff, bang. Like I just clear it all out, like make room for something new. I even, I have a little riser thing to sort of introduce it. It's like you're walking into a nightly court and it goes, hear ye, hear ye, here comes piano and what else is in there? Pad, piano and pad. I believe that's what's in there. I know it's, uh, I know there's keys of some kind. Keys, oh, piano and strings, hear ye, hear ye. So this happens. You'll definitely hear this, and then you'll hear it come in, and you'll see it's a very smooth, natural transition. I also have the element sort of aid in the moving over here. Now here, I purposely moved it off the beat to trick the listener. This also throws you off your rocker a little bit, but not too much, because it comes back, and it's right there, the kicks do. And when the kicks do, they do another intro, which is you know a, sort of an echo of what happened just a phrase ago, literally a phrase ago, and then a new thing comes in. So I create another doorway to introduce another element of of melody. It's the nature of melody at work. And so here, if I play it, let me play it a little bit farther back. We'll start from like over here. So you see, it just starts, it starts grooving, like that's it. So this may be something that you, maybe you found really, really useful. Maybe you already knew all this stuff and this is like, you're like, oh, who cares? But I personally sort of wish that there, I mean, like, I'm sure there, there are videos out there that have stuff sort of along these lines, but none of them really like, I don't know. They're usually just like spotty videos. They're not part of a series. So I kind of like the idea that this is in like a series that people will come across as they're trying to learn something, you know, dynamically. Like I want to move towards a goal instead of trying to find a bunch of videos that will hopefully fit the goal that I'm trying to get to um, sort of randomly. It's just a struggle of YouTube. You know, when you're trying to find that one tutorial, it teaches you how to do the thing and then you can't find it and you're like, ah, 
It's, you know, that, yeah, I know that. And you end up watching like the first 30 seconds of a bunch of tutorials and you're like, nope, this isn't it. Nope, this isn't it. Skip, skip, skip through the video. Nope, this isn't it. And yeah. Anyways, if you have any questions about this, let me know. I really tried to be sort of comprehensive. I picked this track because there's a lot of moments and it just goes through a lot of stuff. I have other tracks that do things, but I wanted something that really shifted around. You'll probably notice more often than not that things generally don't change timbres quite, um, and especially in like like UKF records and stuff like that. They usually try to keep to one type of melody. I personally find that interesting if I'm dancing or driving or going somewhere, but if I'm just listening, it's boring. So I need a little bit more. So some of this I do just to keep it interesting as a listener, but I also try to make it very sort of danceable at the same time. Sometimes, I mean, like, I don't know, you know, it's just, it's just the genre, what, what the purpose is of that track. Like there are lots of great tracks that I think are way more entertaining when I'm driving, but when I sit down to really just listen to it by myself, it's like not as, you know, punchy. It's like, there's some sort of element that uh, in you that responds to it subconsciously better when your attention is not totally on that thing. You like almost appreciate it more. It's the weird experience of art. Go figure. So yeah, subscribe and have a blessed day. No, I'm talking about like this type of a sound. And you could also try moving the filter with it.